Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 16. Removing the parts from the baseboard and planning the generator layout underneath the baseboard. After spending such a long time building up the parts on the baseboard, it seems a bit foolish to have to remove them, but this is the way of things. You start off doing it this way, and then you finally get to the end of the job. Then you have to take everything off the baseboard before the final assembly takes place. There are still a few small jobs to do, for instance, lagging the live steam feed pipes. It's not good policy to leave these in bare polished copper because if you touch them, well, you will burn your hand fairly severely. And because of the temperature of the steam, they soon tarnish anyway. So what I'm going to do, as always, is use some string as thermal insulation for the live steam feed pipes. This is one of the more tedious jobs and requires a lot of patience. On screen at the moment, you can see that I've removed the water tank and I notice that there's some staining of the wood underneath the water tank. The water tank's not leaking. This is where, when I was filling the water tank, the water slopped everywhere. It will be fine once it's dried out, and even if it left a permanent mark, it's underneath the water tank anyway, so it's not going to show on the finished plant. One by one, I'm removing the steam pipes. Some of these pipes will be polished, but as I said earlier, I'll be using some string for thermal insulation on the live steam feeds, but not on other pieces of pipe like this is the connection from the economizer to the clack valve, this will remain in polished copper. I need to remove everything from this baseboard because I'm going to give it another rub down and a good coat of varnish to seal it against the heat and the water from the steam plant. It's now time to remove the main steam pipe. This is the long quarter inch pipe that goes all the way from the turret up to the boiler. For video purposes, I should have continued and removed the pipe, but instead, I unbolted the condenser from the baseboard, ready to remove it. And in this clip, I'm undoing the union nut that holds the quarter inch steam feed pipe into the valve at the top of the boiler. On an entirely different subject, I must congratulate the viewer who spotted the difference in the sound. I'm using a new microphone to record my voice when I do these voiceovers, because the original microphone was on a stand right in front of where I sit and it was in the way of the manual operations on the keyboard during the voiceover and editing process. So for any audio enthusiasts out there, I'm now using a Sennheiser 416 shotgun microphone. It's mounted on a boom type microphone stand to my right, pointing at my mouth from above. So now if I want to, I can wave my hands about. Not that I'm prone to waving my hands about whilst I'm doing the voiceovers, but I'm just saying I could if I wanted to, if you see what I mean. It's a better sound really, these are the microphones that they use in film and television, and if it's okay for film and television, it's okay for my modest videos that I make for YouTube. The final piece of copper pipe to remove is the one that goes from the condenser to the chimney. I've also taken out the bolts that hold the pieces of brass angle to the mounting blocks, so now I can just lift the boiler off the blocks. These mounting blocks need painting properly. It's no good just leaving them in bare metal, they're going to go very, very rusty. I know you can't see them, but that's not the point. I would always know that the mounting blocks would be very rusty. In this clip, I'm writing on the mounting blocks, right and left. And I don't know why I did this, because they're both absolutely identical, and they're going to be painted anyway before they're put back in position. Now all the parts have been removed from the baseboard, I can rub it down with some sandpaper. This baseboard's already had one coat of varnish, but I'm rubbing it down, to provide a key for the next coat of varnish which will be thicker. When building model steam engines or model steam plants like this one, you have to think ahead. Now I need to put a generator in this plant. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it underneath. So this is the planning the generator layout part of the video. And I know that this is the graphic that I would normally use when I'm going to paint something, but you can relax, there isn't any painting in this video. A few weeks ago, a very kind viewer from America sent me this. And what is it? It's a box with a brushless motor in it. But it's not just a brushless motor. It was sent to me by a man called James Hawley from Minneapolis. And James Hawley really knows his stuff. Not only did he wire the diodes on the end of it to give me a nice DC supply output, he was also kind enough to send me an email containing data as to how many RPM it needs to do for how many volts I need to get out of it. So at 1000 RPM, this motor will generate 2.44 volts, and that's okay. So if I spin it at 5000 RPM, I should get 12.2 volts. But as this is the no load voltage, I think it needs to spin faster than 5000 RPM. So what I propose to do is gear up the motor underneath the baseboard. 
I don't want to use cogs, though, because they make a horrible whirring noise. I think a tooth belt drive would be better. I also need a shaft to go all the way underneath the baseboard and come out the other end, because I don't fancy putting too much side load on this motor. It's not designed for it. This motor was designed to spin a model aircraft propeller, so its mechanical construction needs to be taken into consideration. That's why I'm going to use a counter shaft in substantial bearings, probably plain bearings as well, which will accept the side load from the leather belt to the flywheel, and then a simple tooth belt drive to the motor underneath the baseboard. I once built a model steam launch, and I was using a Stuart twin launch engine, which had two one-inch bore cylinders, and when it drove the propeller directly, the steam engine was going too fast, and it didn't look good and used a lot of steam, so I made a special gearbox with a large cog on the steam engine and a small cog on the propeller shaft, and it was much better. The propeller went really fast, the steam engine went really slow, and the 54-inch long steamboat went through the water a little bit too quick, really. So that's my logic in this application. Hopefully the steam engine will go to realistic speed, and the generator, which will be hidden underneath the baseboard, will be rotating at a realistic speed to generate about 14 volts. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.